what is the difference between layered architecture and tiered architecture? These are two terms which in software engineering they are often used interchangeably without people knowing what is the difference. Layered architecture, when we say layered architecture, layering is a way of organizing code. A typical architecture looks like this. A typical three layer architecture look like this. You have a presentation layer. In the presentation layer, you have all the UI related code. You click a button, you perform some basic validation JavaScript on a browser. So, all that code goes towards presentation, presentation layer. Then we have a business layer. In business layer, we have some business related domain related logic. Okay, your invoice to, to place an order, you need to have item in the inventory. So, that kind of validations goes in, inside the business layer and this is a good practice to double check your validation code in business layer because your presentation layer somebody can compromise the validation by disabling the JavaScript on the browser level. And then we have the persistence layer. The idea of persistence layer is all the data access related code goes in the data access layer. You are retrieving invoice from the database. You are, you are saving information of the invoice or order in the database. So, all that logic goes into persistence layer. You may ask why we, why we organize code in layered architecture? The idea is to separate the responsibilities. The layer, layer code responsibility is to make sure only the persistence layer responsibility is to make sure all the code related to data, data access goes to the, that layer. In, uh, especially in Microsoft Word, the data access layer changes a lot. There was ADO.NET, then Object Relation Mapper became popular. So, it is a very good practice, practice all your database uh, related data access, database access related code should go to the persistence. So, that tomorrow if your, your things, if some data access technology state changes, it affects only that layer. Business layer. Business layer is very, very important. The presentation layer. Presentation layer keep changing. We used to have client server, then we, we to move to web browser. So, chances are you may have multiple presentation layer for your business layer. You may have a mobile interface, you may have a web browser, you may for tablet, you could, there could be another uh, interface. So, it is a very good idea to uh, keep your presentation layer separate than presentation layer, so that your presentation layer can change. Architecture could be your presentation layer, your business layer, your pers persistence layer uh, or data access layer or and the database all on one server. That would be one tier architecture. I have never seen that example. Um, at, at worst, I in small companies, I, I have seen two tier architecture. In two tier architecture, your presentation layer, your business layer, your uh, data layer, they all go into one server, web server and database, you have a, another server for the database. So, that is two tier architecture. This kind of architecture is simple, it is good for very simple websites which may not have too many users and uh, uh, you, you are not doing any complex calculations. So, this tier, this two tier architecture is good for very simple applications. Now, let us come to three tier architecture or n tier architecture. So, it is a very common all the presentation layer are deployed on the web servers. You may have a multiple servers, multiple servers and generally this, this multiple servers talk uh, through, the, through a load balancer. They talk to application servers. So, your application and your data access layer is deployed on this application servers. So, that if, if, if you are you doing very, very complex uh, data processing, data crunching, 
so, uh, so that this server can handle the load. Your web browser is not boggled down by your complex processing and you can have multiple app servers. And finally, these app servers talk, uh, talk to a database which is deployed on the database server. So, you would ask why we need the, this uh, three tier or n tier complex or uh, deployment architecture. What are the benefits of this uh, n tier architecture? So, I will give you three main benefits. It is very good for the scalability. Uh, if your application crunching is too much, you can add more app servers. If there are too many users, you can add more web servers. So, web servers and app servers you can scale independent of each other, each other and uh, the, it will be able to handle lot more user requests. Second benefit is fault tolerance. If one of the server is down, one web server or app server is down, uh, other servers will continue, continue working. So, there is no, no single point of failure. Uh, if, you, if you had only uh, one app server going down, uh, other web server and app servers can continue, continue to work. So, so that you can have uh, uh, uptime, lot of uptime which is very, very important if your uh, website is handling lot of orders. The third benefit is security. You can move your connection strings from web server to application server. That way, if your web server is compromised, still you can catch some security threats at the app server. So friends, today we discussed what is the different difference between layered architecture and tiered architecture. Layered architecture is about, deploy, uh, is about organizing your code. And tiered architecture is about deploying, how you deploy your code on how many machines. So friends, if you like this video, like it, share it and subscribe to this channel for your regular, regular updates. Also connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter, especially LinkedIn. Uh, if you like uh, small summaries of the video, I will be putting lot of small summaries of the video on LinkedIn. Thanks again.